Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Today, I've got a bunch of questions from people, and uh, we'll uh, take them one at a time and start to explore it. So take the first one, which is comes out of our discussion last week, and that is also one of the exercises we did last week, where we feel the leg with the hand and feel the hand with the leg. And the question is, is it what happens if if the hard to get the hand the feeling of the hand out of the way so that you can actually allow the leg to to dominate or to to get you know center stage to actually feel with the leg and this is a really important question and an important thing to for us to to work on and that's because that we have a certain presets in the, our nervous system, which are the pre-conscious settings that we have accumulated over a lifetime of doing things. And our bodies have picked up habits about how we perceive things. So what we're actually asking to do in this case is to flip it around and take what is pre-conscious that is not yet conscious and make it conscious. And so we, what we're doing in that case is whenever I put my right hand on my right, my right leg, say, uh, my right hand is, it has many more neural connections than my right leg. And this is probably true of most people. Most of us have, have a, a stronger sense because we use our hands a lot more than we do our, our thighs. And so there's there's the neural connections we build up over time have, um, have been much, are much greater in the hand. So there's naturally we're gonna feel, and our brain ordinarily just mushes them together and it just has the feeling and it doesn't really differentiate between the information that is being presented by the sense neurons in the skin on the leg and the sense neurons in the palm of my hand my fingers. So what the exercise is about is to consciously override that pre-conscious impulse to just mush them all together. And the other pre-conscious impulse, which is to just feel with the hand and to say, oh, I'm actually want to establish more connection between my brain and my leg and learn to be able to switch, consciously switch which parts of my sensory neural network I'm activating. When we do this, we're bringing the conscious awareness to the pre-conscious mind. Something which has happened a thousand times that is feeling with a thousand times, a million times in your life, where you're feeling something with your, with your thigh, but you don't even notice, not unless there's pain involved. So, but if you, you just try right now, just put your hand, your right hand on your right leg and bring your awareness to your hand and feel through your hand and feel the leg. And if you're wearing pants, then you feel the pants that uh, are, are there and then You'll also be able to feel through the pants and notice that there's a, a mass on the other side. So just get that feeling in your hand and just take some time with it. Because part of this, of repairing the nervous system, and I, I, I'm going to say that the essential part is curiosity. That if you're just doing this, because Rick said to do that or whatever, then you're probably not gonna get much out of the exercise. But if your hand is feeling into your leg and is actually curious about what's happened there, but also curious without getting into the story, curious about without getting into a story, oh, I'm not really feeling my, feeling my leg, I'm really feeling my pants and my pants, they're, they're made out of cotton and blah, 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 blah. Then you, you, you missed it. Back up. 
and just feel without a story. Now we're gonna reverse that and feel with your leg. So in order to do that, take the hand away and just see if you can sense, let's say your pant leg, your pants with your, with your thigh. See if you can feel your pants. Because here we're, we're asking the leg to do something it doesn't ordinarily do. Even though it's happening on pre-conscious level, but to actually report out loud what it's saying, what it's feeling, it's, it's, that's asking a lot of a leg, but we're doing it. So you feel that. And so just you're establishing that sensing, that sense of feeling with the leg. So it senses that there's something there, even if there's no story and, and better if there is no story. So then now you put your hand on the leg and notice that there's a different feeling there. You take the hand away and there's a different feeling and put the hand back and you take it away. And each time you just feel and you feel and note that there's a difference without getting into the details of the difference. Say, oh, well, there's more heat when my hand's there, blah, blah, blah. Say, there's a sense of heaviness or, or no, no. We want to just feel and take it away. And so that just doing that, just being able to sense with that, consciously overriding your habits, you're bringing parts of your nervous system out of their torpor. They've been asleep and you're waking them up. And anytime you do that, you are generating growth in your nervous system. You're generating new neural connections and possibly even some new neurons. You're and something which 20 years ago, that was impossible, but now it's, it's happening. Now it's, 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 a, it's a scientific fact, even though we always assume that you have a certain amount of neurons and they're gonna die off and then you're dead. But now it's like, no, no, you create new neurons and new neural connections and, and all the way. And, but what does it is curiosity. That is, you're investigating. And what this does, this curiosity, it, by creating these new neural connections, it reverses the the noise that is in there, you know, what we're calling the, um, the um, epigenetic noise, which some scientists are saying is the cause of, of uh, the symptoms of aging is the epigenetic noise. That is epigenetics being the science of how environment affects the gene expression. So we're saying that if you change the environment, both internal and external, that is, you're not surrounding yourself in a, with a hostile environment, you're creating a, a fairly supportive one. And also your internal environment is not hostile. That is, you're not overstressing or you're not ha having negative stress where you're, ah, you're tearing yourself apart by the stress, but you're actually able to create coherence, energetic coherence within the system, then you get that there's, um, you reduce the epigenetic noise by creating more coherence. So we practice this. You can practice this if you've got feet and you feel the floor with your feet and you say, I'm gonna feel the floor with my left foot. And you do that. And then you say, okay, now the right foot. And you do that. And then if you got shoes on, you feel your foot in the shoe, you feel your socks. And when you're doing this, the whole system becomes more lively. You start to regenerate your body mind by creating this supportive epigenesis, the supportive internal environment. 
Okay, uh, any questions on that? Thoughts? Anybody? Keith. You know, that was a really good exercise and what I found, and I'm not sure what the exact term is, but I know you probably know it off the tip of your tongue. I don't know if it's uh, the visual projection, but just trying to imagine that reaching out and trying to feel something and the only thing that you have to feel with is the appendage that you're trying to feel it with, whether it be your thigh or to be your foot. And it's just something that helped me just try to use as an exercise that, you know, I was in my mind tied up and I needed to see what this felt like, but I, all I had was this appendage and it really just kind of helped. So that's just me working my way through it, you know? Thanks, Keith. Peter. Yeah, you know, I, uh, it, this is extremely interesting. It reminds me a while ago, a friend who's an expert in um, healing, body work, exercise, was showing me some exercises for my, uh, my hip joint problems. And she showed me um, liminal movement, you know, sort of if you're just sort of moving up and down, uh, you know, you're not, you're just barely moving or not actually moving. And the rationale was that it's a way of exercising the neuromuscular junction uh, that uh, that will improve, you know, the function of that, you know, of those of the, uh, you know, the well, it'll improve the function of the mind-body, uh, you know, movement by by enriching the um, uh, or healing the neuromuscular junction. It seems like a similar thing. You're kind of you're um, anyway, just a thought. No, that, I, I thank you. That was, that was actually quite quite beautiful because that is what's happening, and that's what's happening in when we're doing Taiji Chan very very slowly. Is we're exploring those liminal movements when we take our attention away from "Am I doing it right?" and we're putting it on "What am I feeling?" and really slow it down and actually feel that the tiny movements. Then we can. We can explore and reify those uh, those neural connections at that at the transition point. So I, I love that. That that's that's terrific. We particularly see that in uh, you know when we're place the intention to move but don't move. This is something we do in each round a lot. It's you know move but don't move. And so the intention is there and you're feeling the, you're feeling everything geared up to do the movement, except you have not given the muscles a, the command to contract. And consequently you get this, this energy buildup that comes from, from being at that liminal point. So that's, that's a great point there, Peter. Thank you. Scott. Something just occurred to me. Um, I tried to feel my one knee with my other knee, and since they're you know different, um, mm -hmm. it occurred to me: is that a, is it? it could, this could be used as a way to. Could this be a used way to like balance and train your something that's out of balance? Like if like one knee's out of balance or one knee's damaged or one hand or whatever. You think absolutely, that would... absolutely. Yeah, you know, well, you'll find that that your most people the nervous system is not balanced. We don't, we, we're, we don't have the same, we have a dominant side in other words. And, and, and consequently they're through the, that pre-conscious habit, it doesn't get the, the non-dominant side don't get no love. And, and so if you can consciously, let's say you always pick up your teacup with your right hand, you consciously pick it up with your left hand and feel, then you are going to be changing your brain as you do that. You are taking volitional control over a habitual action which changes and which will have the effect of creating a, a heightened level of brain coherence whenever you do that. 
So uh, I believe it, it, it I, I personally have found that it does help to heal if you are able to direct your attention bilaterally and you're able to, to start to balance things out. Um, Jonathan, you're, oh. you're, you're on mute. You're on mute. Uh, following up on what Scott just said here, do you think when we put our hands together, it can feel like a chord, like simultaneous, but what's actually happening either has to be or that, that it's a very rapid back and forth that we just don't notice? Sometimes the left is feeling the right, sometimes the right is feeling the left. Or do the right and left actually simultaneously feel each other? Or And that's there's a difference between that and right and a very rapid left, right, 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 left, right that gets mushed into that. What do you think? That, that's, a, that's a really good question. That's a really good question. So like a chord is composed of notes, distinct notes. And if you arpeggiate that chord, like say you're playing a guitar and you arpeggiate, you are still playing a chord. Let's say you're playing a G chord, but you're playing you know, the G and the B and the D. You're making those, uh, you're allowing each of those notes to come forth. If you play them all together, they kind of blend together and they have its own distinct sound. So the, uh, when the hands go together, your brain is getting two very different stories. One told by the left hand, one told by the right hand. They are entering and the, the right hand is entering the left side, the left hemisphere, the left hand is entering the right hemisphere. And traditionally they met at the corpus, through the corpus callosum, which is this big trunk of nerves at the center. When you're in a state of whole brain coherence, you bypass that. You then, the brain starts to communicate in ways which are not limited to that narrow trunk of nerves, but it, it communicates instantaneously across distance. So in when we're bringing the hands together, we do get a chord. And then unless you consciously override and say, okay, left hand, you've got, you, it's, you're, you're taking a solo now. And they say, okay, now right hand. And now left hand, now right hand, and back and forth. And then, but also what's happening is the chord, the, the unity. So we have the unity, but we also have the yin and the yang. So we have the, the taiji, the unity, we also have the yin and the yang, all are appearing simultaneously. And which one gets, a, which one uh, is, comes to the awareness is the one where we put our attention. So it's a statement of our relationship to the event. So here, my if my relationship to the event is just feel and not really differentiating, then the unity is what gets the, the, the brain has, has made a, uh, a synthesis of it. If I say right hand, then that's that gets it, my left hand. So it goes back and forth like that. Richard. Um, I This is the first time I've ever even considered this is this is touching your hands together. We're now talking about feeling your hands together. Exactly. Which is a whole new experience. Entirely different. Entirely, you're absolutely right. Thank you for pointing that out because it, you know, we did a thing at, at Taiji Alchemy a few years ago where I've made a distinction between touching and feeling. And, and this is exactly what, uh, what we're talking about here. This is, you know, touching is a motor activity I'm extending out and, and making contact. Feeling is the uh, sensory activity. It's the afferent. I'm, I'm receiving information and, and taking that in. Two very separate, two very distinct parts of our nervous system. Different neurons are handling the information here. Sensory neurons say muscles contract. Or I mean, uh, I'm sorry, motor neuron says muscles contract. Sensory neuron says, what information can I get from this moment, from this event? So it's that learning to consciously do both. 
is at the core of our Kung Fu. So it's not just memorizing a bunch of exercises, a bunch of body positions, and I do this and that, and, and if he does this, I do this. No, no, it's learning how to differentiate the sensory and the motor in almost no time to be able to process that information. And that's only done whenever we are in a state of wholeness, when we're in a state of whole brain coherence and, and body-mind coherence. And then, then the, the reaction time is, is freakly fast. You know, going back to the, uh, the idea of, of training your opposite, uh, your non-dominant hand. My buddy Jonathan and I, we play uh, tennis uh, uh, together a lot. And uh, years ago, Jonathan took it upon himself to, to <laughs> play ambidextrously. So rather than hitting a backhand in the conventional way, Jonathan will just flip the racket to his left hand and, and whack it with his, with, with his left hand. And I scoffed, I say scoffed, I did, at, <laughs> at, at, his, uh, at this and say, hey, that's never gonna, that's never gonna pay off. Well, he's actually pretty good at it now. So he, uh, he actually can hit, he can hit a decent shot with his left hand. So he's training his brain to do something which I can't. I don't, I don't hit very well with my left hand, but it's something that we can all do. We can all train something so that we are not trapped in a, um, you know, in habits. I, um, uh, I have a friend who uh, had a stroke a few years ago and uh, his, the right side of his body is paralyzed or was paralyzed, and he's been consciously rebuilding his, um, uh, his, his body. He's consciously recreating his, his right, the right, the left side of his brain, which controls the right side of his body. And I just got a report that he was driving in the back roads of, <laughs> of Joshua Tree. Um, so, uh, He's, he's come a long way in, in a couple of years, something which the doctors poo-pooed and they said, sorry, uh, any, anything you got now, you know, they said this a couple of years ago, hey, it's only gonna get worse from here. And, and, and Dave said, nah, no, I, I don't buy that. And so uh, he's now has rebuilt, by using this idea of feeling, he has rebuilt his, his, the right side of his body and the left side of his brain. So that's that's pretty cool. Okay, anything else? We'll move on here if that, anybody else have. Uh, Peter, you have something? Oh, yeah, but I don't wanna take up too much time if you wanna go into some practice. I, I do have a thought. Um, uh, what's that? Well, briefly, what, what Jonathan uh, talked about with the two hands like this reminded me that in, uh, you know, I've been learning uh, swimming dragon qigong which is, um, you know, it stretches out the spine in an interesting way. And the two palms are completely touching the whole surface of both palms. And you, you move back and forth across the midline. Um, and it has a really intriguing quality. It's hard for me to distinguish between the quality of the movement and the quality of the energy. But I think the classical description of moving stillness, I really find something like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if, if the, um, you know, if, if the two palms completely touching each other along the lines of what you're talking about tonight has something to do with that quality, that sort of smooth, that smooth quality. Um, that I can't speak to the smooth quality. Um, I, I do know that Swimming Dragon is a very powerful form of qigong and uh but i it's not one that i i, I can speak uh, authoritatively on so uh um uh, i'm probably gonna take a pass on on commenting on 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 any you know okay phenomenon you okay. might be experiencing nope. there just because it's a it's not not an area i have uh, expertise um let's uh let's move on to the next topic and that is uh something that keith brought up which is is the spine actually bringing this idea of feeling into the spine 
And um, so the, it's an area that very few of us, it would seem, do a lot of feeling on. It's not something that gets a lot of our attention unless it hurts. And if it hurts, then we, we, we notice it a lot. But if it's not, then it kind of goes back into the back into the pre-conscious. But if you can bring awareness to your spine and get the um, bring it more into a, a, a conscious connection, a conscious relationship, I think the good things happen. Most important is you notice whenever, very soon when something is not right. Because a lot of times when pain happens, it's because we ignored the, the, the softer signals. If your back hurts, it's because you've been going la, 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 whenever, whenever the, the, the spine is saying, uh, excuse me, uh, we, we've got a problem here. And it, it's not until it starts to scream at you that you start to pay attention and then ignore it again. So one of the things that we've done, and we do this in the uh, Reclaiming Lost Territory exercise, I like to do that now, haven't done that on this, thing, on this show in a while, and, uh, uh, and it heightens your awareness of not just your spine, but the muscles around the spine, because uh, a lot of times they're hypertonified. They're like, they're due to the way we stand or sit or even sleep. We, the muscles are forced into position where they have to pre-consciously adjust to the, the aberrations in the way we're, we're stacking our vertebrae. So learning to focus on individual vertebrae and to then and relax the muscles around them to let go. And that I, I believe has a, a health giving effect. I think it allows for the energy flow to be much cleaner, less noise in the, in the, in the system. And since the spine is like the main trunk for the body mind connection, you want to have you want to have a clean signal coming across there. So we want to clean out the noise that comes with uh, excess muscular contraction, you know, muscular tension, or even just mis misplacement of the uh, 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 of the structure. The way that you know, if you're lined up wrong, then you're kind of creating these 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 faults. So let's uh, why don't we stand up. And we're gonna do uh, do that thing from the embracing lost territory. Let me turn that light down a little bit. It's a little glary. Okay, so the main idea here is you know what we're gonna start by getting our three pillars in because that's uh, uh, that really helps with everything we're doing. So let's get the, uh, let's establish that. So have your feet of uh, a hip width apart and feel the, feel the weight over the balls of your feet. The weight is spread throughout the whole foot, but you're particularly accenting the balls of the feet. And just to, Mention it again, the, you know, the ball is not at the center of the foot, it's along the big toe line. It's along the medial line, right behind the big toe, that big knobby joint there. And you wanna use that as your contact point. Knees are unlocked. Feel so kind of settling down into your legs, not not bending the knees so much as unlocking them. Now reach with the crown point of your head. 
not the top of your head, but the crown point, the, just toward the toward the back, where the uh, the posterior fontanelle is, the the place that hair whirl. So reach up with that, and simultaneously you're sitting into your legs as you're reaching up. So you're what are you doing? You're creating tensegrity in the spine. It's lengthening his spine as you do this. You tuck in your chin. Just a little bit. And allow the jade pillow gate at the base of your skull to, to open. You're going to feel a lengthening in your neck. Feeling gentle tensegrity there. You're connecting up the energy of the earth, the energy of the heavens. And your body is a conduit for that energy. You're opening up to the big chi. Relax your lower back. Allow your pelvis to, to level out. You're flattening out the lumbar curve a little bit. Dropping your coccyx, your tailbone. And on your tailbone, there's, there's an energy point called the Wei Lu. So that's reaching down as you're, and reaching away from your Niwan at the, at the crown of your, of your head. That pole, those poles in opposition are, are generating energy. Reach with your elbows. Your arms are slightly rounded. Feel your clavicular notch and feel, feel like you're lifting. Like there's a, a thread there pulling up on the clavicular notch, opening your chest, opening your shoulders. Point your index fingers, feel your energetic coherence. Place the tip of your tongue on the roof of your mouth, behind your teeth. And breathe through your nose. Breathe diaphragmatically. Allow your body to get very sung. And by sung, we mean to release into the intrinsic structure of the body. Feel the support of the connective tissue system, of the bones. And allow that to do the work rather than tensing your muscles. Now, what we're going to do is to slowly unwind the spine. We're going to, starting at the, at the base of the skull and just gradually release the muscles and, and allow the, while still supporting with uh, the uh, spine underneath, we're gonna let go of, of the muscular tension and allow the spine to go down. So, doing it in profile, I'm this is very accelerated. We're gonna do it much slower, but the idea is that you're gonna start at the very top and one vertebra at a time, you're going to let go. And you wanna feel into your vertebrae. So there is my, my uh, cervical vertebrae. And then I start working on my thoracic vertebrae, my upper chest. And I start to let that go and I let that go. Notice my hands are staying very close to my legs as I'm going down. So I'm supporting with my lower back as I'm going down and I continue down until I get to my lumbar and I drop down even more. And so that's the basic idea. But we're gonna do it now nice and slow. So we'll start So get your, get your position, reach with the crown of your head. And as you're going down, you want to continue to reach with the crown of your head. 
So even as even as I'm coming down like this, I'm kind of reaching out with with the crown as I'm as I'm doing that. So let's uh, let's begin here. So so start with a very start with the jade pillow gate. Start at the at the base of the skull there. You're dropping your chin and feel that lengthening of your neck. Take a breath and uh, let go and then go down the neck. Take another breath. Each time you exhale, feel yourself releasing some tension. Feel into your neck and feel the vertebrae. We're still in the cervical area right now. I just feel what that feels like. You're being supported by the thoracics. And you're feeling how your neck is letting go of tension. Now we're going to start on the thoracic, right there at the at the that big one right at the top, and start to let that go. And breathe. And most of us are not going to be able to actually pinpoint each vertebra. But do the best you can. You're heightening your awareness. There's no pass or fail on this one. There's just you know, the actual attempt to do it. The trying is the, is the doing. So the trying, the doing is what gives us the benefit. Each breath allows you to go down a little deeper, still supporting with your lumbar vertebrae as you're letting go one by one of your thoracic. You may have to check your legs, your butt, you want to let go of any extraneous tension there. Adjust your posture so that you're really still feeling the weight over the balls of the feet. And so now we've completed the, the thoracics. I'll just hang out there for a moment. So we release the, the cervical vertebrae in the neck, the thoracic vertebrae in the upper back. Now we're going to get on to the big guys down in the lumbar area. And slowly start to let that go. Most of us have five of those, so it's a shorter run, but it, there's much bigger energies involved. Your knees are bent, reaching from your head, also kind of reaching from your tailbone. So you're feeling your spine elongating as you go down. Relaxing your lower back, your lumbar area, down to your sacrum. Now straighten your legs and continue to drop. This time you're feeling it in the backs of your legs. You're feeling it in your hamstrings and your calf muscles. You're letting go of your back muscles as much as you can. Feeling into that. Just letting the weight of your body do the work. You're not forcing anything. Now, bend your knees, sit down, and slowly come up. Straighten your legs out a little bit. Begin starting to stack up your lumbar vertebrae. 
You do this a little faster. Now begin your thoracic vertebrae. Stacking them up one by one. Lengthening the spine as you go. Feel your cervical vertebrae. You're stacking those up now. I just feel into that. And see if you can find a sweet spot there of alignment for your spine. Where it just, it just feels right, it feels centered. You're in central equilibrium. Now bring your hands up and reach with your elbows, your wrists open and arch your back. Breathe and allow the weight of your arms to open your shoulders, open your chest. And then come up. Hands down. Feel your three pillars, your central equilibrium, your energetic coherence, your um, unkinking the hose. You feel the energy in your hands, feel it throughout your body, feel anything, everything circulating. Feel the circulation of your blood throughout the body. Feel your spine. Spiral down to the left and step in. Take a deep breath. And exhale and disappear the chi. Empty out. Allow yourself to dissolve into that emptiness. Occupy the gap between thoughts. Great. Take a seat, please. Okay. How'd that go? Good, good. Great. Valerie. Um, <laughs> I would suggest that if not next week, let's spend the entire hour just doing that. We need to go much <laughs> slower going down and coming up. Um, <laughs> I could still be on my way down right now. Uh -huh. uh, it feels uh, good, doesn't it? But you oh, can, you, 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 kids, you can do this at home. This is uh, take your time and, and explore it because any awareness you can bring to your spine is going to pay off. That's going to that's going to be beneficial to your health because a healthy spine is is essential to any uh, anything you're doing. Well, my Keith. world is rehab right now, and that was really a good stretch that I will enjoy doing it. Not only this but inside the shower while i'm steaming that's a really good stretch <laughs> good <laughs> great good scott well i've actually been doing this one for quite a while and i actually had you go over the whole thing in your kitchen because i still wasn't getting it 
And I still didn't get it until tonight. And I really got it. And I've got a real happy spine. Oh, yay. (laughs) And I I can actually feel most of the vertebrae. Wonderful. Which is, that's new for me. I mean, I can feel them generally, but now I can, wow. That's great. And yeah. It, yeah, I it, usually it, have that's one really or two essential. That I feel way too much. That's really essential, uh, Scott, because it's a uh, it is the feeling that makes that thing work. You know, it's not just oh, I'm going to do this, going to do this happy stretch, and it's going to be nice. And you know, it's no, no, it's the feeling. It's actually bringing your conscious awareness to each of those little happy vertebrae <laughs> and make them sing. And uh, then it, you're bringing, you know, it's like the E leads the chi. So you're bringing chi to the, to that area. Cool. cool. Okay. Uh, great. Okay. Moving on. Um, yes. So uh, a few weeks ago, we did a thing with Ward off right. And uh, we we're playing with the uh, Pong Jin. And uh, um, well, Stan had a question about the what the left hand is doing with that. And uh, so just to, to recapitulate. So if we're if we're, we're expressing Pong Jin, which is that up and out energy, and we're using a ward off posture to do it, and we're doing ward off right, you know, it's, we're feeling the ball setting the spiraling down, and then you set the elbow, and as you're coming up, you're reaching with the wrist and opening, and that's what's happening with the right arm. But what's the left hand doing? So as we're doing that, it's coming up here, and one of the things it does, it kind of rotates a little bit, and just that little rotation there creates an energetic flow. So there's, there's, this is happening here. But the other thing it's doing, we're looking at it this way, is it is pulling away from the right hand. So the, this is creating a certain energy, but it's still less than half of what is possible because it is, we're not completing the circuit. But if we, this hand is, is yang and it's extending outward, and this hand is yin and it's pulling back. We have we have this dynamic tension between them, which generates energy, generates energy flow. So why don't you stand up and we'll just kind of play with that. We just have a couple of minutes here, but we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll do that. So you so you feel the ball of the right foot. You set the right knee. You spiral down to the left. So you're loading up the right qual. You set the right elbow. And you are then, as you turn your body, you reach with the right wrist. And feel with your right index finger. So that creates that energetic coherence. And you're reaching out. And with the left hand, you're pulling away. And like we we're t- talking about before, it's move, but don't move. So you're feeling that pull, but you're not actually yanking it back. You're, mm, you're creating this opposition between the right hand and the left. And it is that opposition that enhances the chi flow and creates jin, creates that expression of of energy through the body. So we do it again, we right ball, set the right knee, spiral down to the left and then reach with the right elbow. And as you turn, you reach, you rotate the right arm, you reach with the wrist and turn. And when you get here, you're pulling back with that left hand and reaching out with the right. And that opposition is what generates the chi flow. So just as we were talking about earlier, 
your ability to feel the out energy with the right hand and feel the in energy with the left hand is requires two different parts of your brain and your nervous system to 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 make that happen but in a super conscious state you can do that you can make both happen at once and just feel into that and it is the feeling that enables you to get into that super conscious state any questions Jonathan, you're muted. You're muted. You're muted. You're muted. Alrighty. Okay. It's an interesting <laughs> exercise because, as you know, in the Tai Chi Alchemy community, when we do this, we make an opposing magnet kind of opposite forces in opposition, and now it's almost as if if we do your the thing now of really feeling what's going on. That itself is the separation because you know an opposing force is a separation, but you're adding another layer of intentionality to the separation. So it becomes a very, you know, it's a very interesting dense little exercise here. If we put the two together, you didn't explicitly talk about the chi ball opposition, but I don't know. Can you bring it into it? What do you think? Well. The way the way we're usually talking about the chi ball is, is is the two forces coming together. If we're pulling them apart, then that right. it, it, there, there's a palpable energy there, but it's a different one. It's not condensing; it's expanding. Right. But what I'm saying is that coming together is also a bouncing apart. Right. It's an opposing magnet thing. It's it's as if as they come together, they're kind of separating too. Good point. The yeah. Energy separates. So it's just an I interesting look forward thing to, to add report. that layer of, yeah, I, I, that's my week homework. I look forward to your report next week. It, when the weather warms it, up, we're back on the court. Later this week. <laughs> uh, anybody else? Uh, <laughs> Scott. So is this the, so would this be the same? I actually had this question this morning. Is this kind of the same thing in cloud hands? Is you're reaching out with the. Yes. Reaching out with one and pulling back with the other. And. Every 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 move in the form has some form of that. It has some form of opposition going on, and, and that's how the, the the energy gets uh, gets created between them. So yes. Yeah, man. I mean, because my question was because both hands are going out at the same time, right? And that's right. Right, but they. Uh, so you're you're talking about like going going like 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 this, and you're you're here like that, right? You're right. You're you can both hands can be reaching, but where's your oppositional pull there? It's, it's it's your feet, and you can do that, but you can also you know, what's happening here is is this hand is yang 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 going to yin, right? This hand is yin 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 going to yang. So oh, so what's happening here is the right hand here is it's on its yin arc. The left hand is on his yang arc. So it's, you know, so we're going like this and it's going up. So the opposition here, and in this case, rather than it being uh, linear, it's a, it's a rotational pull, right? We got, we got this happening, right? They're going in opposite directions there. So this, this hand is coming down. This hand is coming up. So they're, they're pulling, like that, right? So, so we're we're creating this kind of kind of thing with the uh, with the cloud hands. Does that make sense? Yep. Good. Stan, you got some? You're muted, Stan. You're still muted. You're still muted. <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> there you go oh, yay okay. i knew you could do it <laughs> yes all i gotta say is uh how many years i've been doing this this time i was feeling something like feeling that without even much movement without uh, i was feeling it so after all those years i think i'm getting closer to 
Beautiful. what it should be. Beautiful. And this is what Thank I'm talking you. about with curiosity. That th those words could be said by each and every one of us. It's like, oh, yeah. If you're going <laughs> about it right, you are constantly being surprised <laughs> by, by how deep this thing goes, how deep yes. the rabbit hole goes on this thing, because it just keeps going and going and going, and and each <laughs> layer is like, oh boy, more surprises. And yes. uh, if you have that curiosity. It keeps you young. It keeps your brain active. It keeps your nervous system. You're regenerating your nervous system as you're going. So it it keep it up. Keep it up. Yes. <laughs> Lynn. Thank you. I was definitely keeping it up. It, it was really working. And this energy here was connecting. And I had just like this ball of energy that was swimming around. At the top of my head and i'm like okay that just feels you know very strong and warm and and golden and really nice and then she's polishing her halo i was again. polishing my halo <laughs> <laughs> i need to believe me um but then i asked nick to check and see if he could feel it and he said he could yeah i could so, yeah. <laughs> it was real. <laughs> it's like the energy. Uh, right the answer. But also here at the same time. Beautiful, Richard. I, um, you know, I'm all. I'm always thinking too much, but it occurs to me that we're now building Ting Gen from the outside in. Explain what we're learning about our own ability to sense, uh, excuse me, our own ability to feel is um, building the capability to be very good at feeling the energy of someone else. Yes, yes, you're absolutely right. Because the more you can familiarize yourself with your in the subtleties of your internal state, the more you can recognize those fluctuations that occur in the field around you. And you can say, is this my shit or is this somebody else's? And then you can, you're able yes. to make that distinction and, and it then becomes automatic. It becomes like, oh, it takes no time. You're just, you recognize this long before it manifests in the physical universe. On the, on the road. Yay. Keep it up. <laughs> okay. So, all right. Hi. Thank you all so much. This has been great. Dude, Wonderful. Thank you, Rick. Keep those questions coming in. I love it. I love it. We can get that uh, participation. So yes. appreciate it. Love you all. Thank you, Maria. <laughs> Happy New Year. Yeah. Hello, hello Diane. <laughs> nice, to, nice to see you. Hi, Diane. <laughs> okay. Good night. Good night. Good night.